What is Bitcoins? Before we talk about Bitcoins, let's look at the current financial structure. We have a central authority, which is the bank. And then, let's look at these four friends. Mfo, Ngwa, Fomi, Tamfo. They all have accounts at the bank. And the bank can decide what happens in these accounts depending on the demand of these friends. There may be a credit or a debit to these accounts. Additionally, there may be charges as well as transaction fees as well as taxes. Also, the bank can block an account whenever they want or if they feel like there is something wrong in that account what oh no of course this would be really shocking this is an example of the system right now and how bitcoin came in with a decentralized system earlier digital currencies had a problem prior to bitcoins a double spending problem what does that mean this meant that someone could make a payment twice and get away with it. We're going to look at a friend here before and we'll use an email as an example of a digital currency since it's happening in the virtual space. For one uh, has one email which he wants to send to another person. Ngwa. So for sends the original email to Ngwa, which Ngwa receives. Got it. Then Four may decide to send the same email, like a copy of that email to Tamfu, which he receives as well. Got it. So here there is a double uh, usage here. But no one knows. No one can verify it. This is exactly what happened to earlier digital currencies. There was a problem of using the same funds and sending them to different people. And no way to verify it. No way to check. In 2009, a solution to double spending came up by this unknown person who went only by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. He proposed a solution that involved a decentralized system, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Here, he wanted to solve the problem of double spending. We propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer network. A peer-to-peer -peer here is decentralized network. This was done using a distributed ledger. In other words, blockchain. So whenever we hear the word blockchain, think of a ledger more like the ledger at the bank only this happens in the virtual space we're gonna go back and see how this may have started or how they started with the first miner remember a miner is a word that is commonly used to refer to like gold miners and these are real people but in our case a miner is not a person it's a computer it's a computer with a system that is programmed to uh, produce bitcoins check 
balances. So let's look at the first miner as Satoshi himself. And he created this system and put um, the amount of bitcoins that he wanted in circulation. It was a very specific amount. 21 million bitcoins. That is exactly the amount he wanted in circulation. Now, this amount won't go into circulation immediately. It will go bit by bit, and through a distributed ledger, each miner will earn a certain amount, which will then go into circulation. So he was the first, and he mined the first block, the first ledger which he earned $50. So we can say the first uh, Bitcoins in circulation was $50, uh, 50 Bitcoins, I mean. And then we have a second miner who also thought this was amazing. So let me get my computer and do this. Let me do this. So he got the system on as well. And once you set a system on, you have your own uh, you just download the Bitcoin protocol and then you're good to go and look at how the miners kept adding and if you join the network you also became um, a power a decision maker so unlike the bank which we saw earlier here Every miner has the authority, has a say, has the vote to decide what happens in the system. And remember, the miner is not a person, it's a computer that is programmed to do this. Take note that these four miners is just a demonstration of how the mining works but there are well over a hundred thousand miners out there doing this job but anyway anyone can say exactly how many miners since anybody can be a miner you can be a miner I can be a miner but what do I need a computer powerful enough to take the system the Bitcoin system and it's expensive too and then electricity is very costly Let's go back to 2009, how it started. So the first block was created by Satoshi himself. And for this block, he earned 50 Bitcoins. So the program was done in a way that each computer can do a certain calculation, which is very difficult very difficult for the computer to solve but any computer any miner so remember that miner is a computer any computer that solved this puzzle this problem uh, will post the next block in the network so computers compete and after every 10 minutes a new block is created. Remember that a new block is a bundle of transactions that people are making around the world. And these blocks show that these transactions have been verified by the system. So today we have 625,125 blocks. Can you imagine? It started at block one. And here we are so many blocks that keep adding every 10 minutes with new transactions so the miners are there to maintain the system and secure the system through this computer program
and the chain signifies um, the encryption that makes it impossible to hack this system and every block is chained to the next block and the previous block so that if you try to cheat or or attack the system it's impossible because the transactions are all linked and there's no way of modifying or changing anything if you try to change anything the system automatically rejects it it won't work so since 2009 no one has been able to hack the system. Just imagine how robust that is. Let's take a look at a Bitcoin wallet. What is a Bitcoin wallet? It is a software that is connected to the distributed ledger or blockchain so whenever you sign up for a wallet a public and a private key is generated by the system in other words the public key is like your email address and the private key is like your password which gives you the authority to send coins that you own to other users Remember that your private key is very important. It's like your fingerprint. It's like your signature. And this signature can help the system to determine whether or not you own coins. So whenever you make a transaction, the system checks your private key and your public key to make sure the coins are yours and you are not sending them twice double spend and once they confirm that before the transaction is successful we're going to go back to our friends and they probably heard about bitcoins too and they want to be part of it so they got their wallet and they said Oh, bank, we don't need you anymore. So, they need some bitcoins, and the miners are there, the computers are there. They need to connect with a miner to get bitcoins, which is what we said earlier that bitcoins come into circulation from miners who do work and then get paid. So four gets five bitcoins from a miner. He bought it, right? Now, if four wants to send these bitcoins to Ngwa, maybe Ngwa needs two bitcoins from four. Um, four would have to go through the network as well. So once four creates the transaction, um, the transaction would have to be checked by the network of computers. The computers would check if um, four has the amount that he is talking about. So. The computers go through a system of checking and then doing the math puzzle. And remember that this transaction is not only false. There are thousands and thousands of other transactions that are in a bundle and the computer system is going through mathematically in order to check for mistakes or double spend or just to make sure the balance is right. Now once it is right, the computers confirm. So computer one confirms, the first computer that confirms is the winner. So uh, the, the puzzle we talk about is like, 
the computers are going through the puzzle and then trying to solve the math problem and once the first computer that solves the problem confirms and once he does so the other computers would validate uh, validate the transactions and that's when we have a block we have a block published to the network and then you would have Ngwa you see these bitcoins too and then post balance will change to three bitcoins so Ngwa's account is debited while Ngwa's account is debited only if the system checks that um, Ngwa's account has enough bitcoins to do that and four is not trying to cheat or anything so this is how it works every time you send a transaction it goes through the network and it goes into a pool of transactions this is a huge pool some false transaction of uh, two bitcoins went into a big pool and then uh, the system checks checks together with other transactions and if it's confirmed the first computer that confirms it gets some bitcoins as well as a reward for the work done so look here at the blockchain.com explorer you would see how this works this is like live happening right now you have like the transactions right there and these are unconfirmed transactions and then you have the blocks right there these are the blocks that have been published and once a block is published it cannot be reversed so you see the block number right now so it keeps going up every 10 minutes it keeps going up I won't go into the, the explanation of what is a hash because that complicates everything. So it's a basic way, but a hash function, we may talk about it later on, how this makes it impossible to break, to break the system, this hash function that you see right there. And every block has a hash or a previous hash and a new hash. So that you cannot change anything in that block. So when we look at the latest unconfirmed transactions, these are transactions that are still being processed by the network, by the computers. And they only get to the blockchain once they are verified. By the system as valid transactions okay guys so what do we take home here that Bitcoin is a digital currency that is encrypted in a way that is impossible to hack or to attack that is distributed over a huge network there is a ledger that everyone can own I can own that ledger you can own that ledger on a computer and once you own that ledger, you have the power to have the network, to maintain the network, to secure the network. So unlike the bank that we saw with Bitcoin, every miner or every computer has the power to control the network, making sure that no one 
can cheat the network. So this summarizes it. And then it started in 2009 and this is 2020 and nothing has happened to the chain. No one has been able to break it. Initially, some people lost their Bitcoins initially, and that was due to their own mistakes. Because with Bitcoins, you need to remember your private key. If you forget your password, um, let's take the example of the wallet. If you forget your password, you lose your Bitcoin. And if you lose your Bitcoin, that's it. The Bitcoin is lost. No one else will be able to get it. And so initially people had Bitcoins, so many Bitcoins, because it was very cheap. The price today is 7,000 something dollars. But initially, Bitcoins started at nothing, at cents. Then one dollar, and then, so people didn't know the value of Bitcoin. They got it, but then they forgot the password. Like, more like forgetting your email's password, and then your email's gone. So that's what happened. And those Bitcoins that were lost, they never be found. Unless, of course, those people remember their passwords. So if you ever own any Bitcoins, make sure your private key, your password is everything. It's everything you need to. Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're going to be talking about how you can trade Bitcoins, how you can earn from Bitcoins. I'm going to be sharing my personal story on how I make money from Bitcoins. It's very tricky actually to make money from Bitcoins. So we're going to be sharing that in the video uh, that comes next. Hope you stay tuned, subscribe, share and like, comment. If you have any questions, please ask and we'll be sharing knowledge more and more. See you guys in the next